Now that the Premier League is over, let's quickly look at the team of the season. Not too much talk, let's get straight to it. And it appears that we might be starting with a slightly unpopular opinion, but in goal we have David Rea. The stats show that the Brentford number one was the best goalkeeper in the English top flight this season. He had the most saves all season, most saves in a single game, and also makes it to the top five list of the most clean sheets kept. In case you're expecting to see David De Gea because he's the Golden Glove winner, let's just quickly tell you that number of clean sheets and goals conceded are the only things the Man United goalkeeper had over Raya. Raya had more saves per match, a better save success rate, more sweeper clearances, more high claims and many more forward passes. And of course, Raya had less errors leading to goals than De Gea. For those that want to bring up Nick Pope, David Raya floors him in all those areas as well. So yes, he's our number one today. Now to right back, it's none other than Kieran Trippier and we're sure everyone will agree with this one. He was nothing but solid for Newcastle this season, both going forward and staying back. According to average FOTMOB ratings, Trippier was the best defender in the Premier League this season. He had the second most key passes and the third most progressive passes played all season. He leads the entire league when it comes to crosses and is second only to Kevin De Bruyne in expected assists. Trippier also did an amazing job captaining Newcastle to Champions League qualification for the first time in two decades. At centre-back, we have Ruben Diaz, another guy no one can argue with. He was so solid in defence, there was an important factor in City winning their third league title. Ruben Diaz was nearly perfect for City. He made no errors leading to a goal and conceded no penalties all season. We're not even putting into consideration the many standout performances he put up in the Champions League. Pairing Diaz at the back will be Gabriel. The Brazilian centre-back was so good and reliable for Arsenal this season. He's one of the few people who have played every single game of the season. Among outfield players, he played the second most minutes all season. He was solid at the back, helping Arsenal keep 14 clean sheets. And he also did his bit up front, scoring three goals this season. At left back is Luke Shaw. The Man United defender was solid all season. Absolutely no left back in the league is touching this guy right now. The guy was super reliable for Eric Ten Hag this season, doing great at left back and also perfectly fitting in at centre back when Varane and Lissandro Martinez were unavailable. Let's now head into the midfield. Our DM is definitely Rodri. The Man City guy was such a calm presence in the midfield for City. He was so good that the club's new £45 million acquisition was unable to get into the team all season. Rodri was great at helping cover up the defence and was also excellent at moving the ball forward. The Spaniard had more passes into the final third than anybody else in the Premier League this season. No way he wasn't making it into our 11 of the season. We should now mention that for this 11, we are using a 4-1-3-2 formation. The point is, we have three other midfielders in front of Rodri. First is Bakayo Saka. This guy was one of the reasons Arsenal were in the title race for most of the season. He was in amongst the goals and assists this season. He finished in the top five for most assists and in the top 10 for most goals. Saka was a driving force for Arsenal on the right wing and he finished the season as the player with the most progressive carries in the league. And you know the lad is never scared to take on anybody. He had the third most successful take-ons in the league all season. In the middle of the pack is Martin Odegaard. He was arguably the best midfielder in the league this season. He made the most progressive passes than any other player, scored more goals than any other midfielder, and finished in the top 10 for most goals scored in the Premier League. He also did an incredible job captaining this young Arsenal side through a gruelling title race. Completing the midfield is none other than Kevin De Bruyne. Not much has to be said about this guy. He won the Premier League Playmaker of the Season award yet again after finishing with the most assists in the league. This was his third award, so he extended the record for most Playmaker awards won in the history of the Premier League. De Bruyne also had the most expected assists, third most key passes and third most shot creating actions. And let's not forget the important goals he scored for City this season, all of which nothing but bangers. Now to the attack and we're sure you can guess who we have here. First, it's Harry Kane. The England captain had one hell of a season. This guy really got 30 goals and somehow didn't end up with a golden boot for the second time in his career. Nobody in the league overperformed their expected goals and attempted more shots than Kane this season. And of course, he finished as the second top scorer. The lad also recorded some huge milestones during the course of this season. He became Tottenham's all-time scorer, became the top scorer for a single Premier League club, and also leapfrogged Wayne Rooney to move to second in the Premier League's all-time top scorer's chart. Now, Kane is just 48 goals away from breaking Alan Shearer's record, and he'll surely be looking at shattering it in the next two seasons. Now, to complete this 11 is none other than the player of the season, Erling Haaland. 
the Norwegian marksman came into the league and completely tore it apart. He didn't only win the golden boot, he won it with the most goals ever scored by a player in a single Premier League season. On top of that, the guy still had 8 assists, more than any other centre forward in the league. Haaland also became the quickest player to score 4 Premier League hat-tricks, the first ever player to score hat-tricks in 3 successive Premier League home games, and the Premier League player with the most goals ever scored in all competitions in a single season. Whew. We could go on and on with his records, but the point is, the boy was just truly amazing. And when it came to the awards, he ate up every category he qualified for. Premier League Golden Boot, Player of the Season, Young Player of the Season, FWA Footballer of the Season, European Golden Shoe, and who knows, he may just close the season with the Ballon d'Or. Erling Haaland was not just the best player in England this season, he was arguably also the best player in the world. Now on our bench, we'll have Nick Pope, Manuel Lacanji, John Stones, Declan Rice, Bruno Fernandes, Mo Salah, Gabriel Martinelli, and Ivan Tony. What do you guys think about R11? Anybody you'd take out? Anybody you'd put in? Let us know in the comments. Also, we want to give you guys the responsibility of picking a coach for this incredible team, so drop some good names in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notifications so you never miss out on new content, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.